expecting to see a stronger Astralis. Once again in the server, they dominated Dust too. Let's see if they can replicate the form again. They so love these utility heavy pistol rounds and you see a P250 and a Molotov, quite the unique purchase for Magisk. Nading off the door early and two going ramp side early to be ready for the potential for a low site take. Okay, so smoke towards main. BMS needs to be careful now. Can't get swung on from yard, has to drop back and quite the passive approach from Mouses. They're just gonna walk out squeaky door. Molotov. Holding the vent drop aggressively. To retake top? Oh, look at Frozen go. Three of them just going a queue on top of his head. Well, three dead should be the round. It was a great positioning from him. He does try and fake the sound cue, but there is already a Bob, Bob, uh, a man there in Rops confirming their suspicions that it's all smoke and mirrors. Has Beamus heard this? Is he on high alert? Well, they've definitely seen him now. Oh, Magus, down to 25. Someone tweeted me just now actually saying, uh, Alex, you know, trying to say I'm wrong. Uh, they said, hang on, let me get it right. I've heard you advocate the P250 over the Glock on pistol rounds for accuracy. I want to let you know it's the Glock is more accurate. My, I was, I usually say damage fall off. Maybe I, I misspoke, but yeah, damage fall off is the upgrade. So when you can take those longer range fights, similar to that uh, of the USP, it's the great leveler for the T side in that sense. That was what I've been trying to say, but. Well, I understand what you're going with there. You want to, when you take those jewels at range, the P250, ladies and gentlemen, is much better than the Glock, and that is the reason it's being purchased. Some would even argue that you could use the word accurate to describe it. I would say. But thanks for your attempt. Nice work from Frozen with a big triple. You could see that Astralis were not anticipating someone so early in the vents. <laughs> Carrigan's made a call there. It's so wild that they walked out without any contact. So what they've assumed is there's quite a few defenders up on the rafters. Right. And by doing that, by dropping into the vent, it was a retake. Hello, top. Astralis. You've got a pretty intimidating buy there. Okay, well, Glaive has that AK and it's without head armor. So he needs to make sure that the jewels are clean. Does not yeah. want to get into a scrappy fight. Well, like say an MP9. That could be the perfect Glaive killer. And it looks like he could be found. Oh, he doesn't check it. Frozen's walked past them. All of them. And Glaive's going to get slapped in the back of the head here. It's an AK upgrade. Oh, okay. Damn. Damage done, but AK lost. They've got ground covered. This is a bit of a nasty one for Astralis to overcome. Good damage inflicted onto Rops. They need to convert one of these. He's trying to maneuver himself up high, and he's managed to do so. Chris J needs to find that nade connection. Looks like a good bounce off into Dupree. Halves his health, but Rops is the one to draw blood. Device goes down. Flawless so far from Mouse, and Carrigan continues as he punishes Zipex's trophy push. This one's done, and it was a force buy from Astralis, so it should be the clean start and the dream for any CT team. Oh, Nice Dupree. Missing his first, but does not make the same mistake again. And they are low. If he could get some good financial damage here, anything in this 45 second window, any more francs he can find is a step to the good. Carrigan denies it with a nice little crawl, crab walking out. They even salvaged the org there. So with that AK from Glaive's body, the org recovered and the M4, they're going to be hot to trot by the time they get to round number four. This one here, as you were mentioning, should just be Astralis taking the save. Dupree's actually opted back into a Deagle, and there are some light upgrades for a few of his other teammates there. Device is going to buy Deagle as well. P250 for Magus, Glaive, and Zipex. How much can Austra Aust Australia? Astralis do here? They don't have any utility. They're just really hoping to be greeted with a couple of jewels. Frozen's been instrumental in the first two rounds. Let's see if he can continue that domination forward. MP9 again. He's actually given the AK over to Chris. Deagle's now coming out to take some more long range fights as Glaive has called the close lines clear. Did he see Frozen? I guess not. Shadow advantage now. Rops has found Zipex in the meantime, so now more eyes can be trained towards Yard. Frozen really wants to fight this. Mm, good shooting, Chris. Long range, quick tap. I'll do more where that came from. And they've got Frozen Chris perfectly positioned to take these jewels. He actually wants to go further, and it's been the end of him. Oh, that's the perfect weapon for the job from Carrigan. You can hear it thudding away in the distance. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, well, that is the start the mouse needed, and now they've been able to get a bit of confidence going. Everybody has a frag or two. <laughs> the fragging BMS. total right now, Chad, it's 15 frags to mouse and four to Astralis. That's quite the domination. We haven't seen much in the terms of Astralis voice in those half buys, but now they've got everything they desire. Let's see if they can change things up. 
Now, they picked this, Astralis, so I wonder what they learned from last time these two teams faced. It was an overtime affair. Astralis did end up winning it, but it was close. So if they're picking back in, surely there's a reason to do so. Look at this. Frozen wants the info, and he gets more than info. Off the flash, he swings in long range MP9. It seems like Mouseport's plan to disrupt the nuke T side of Astralis has come down to aggression. And oh, Zipex not checking his corners. Glaive does trade. Molly will stop Chris J from getting more info. Oh, he's, he's pushing? Yes. Yes, Chris. More and more information being translated. And oh, Dupree's getting outranged by the <laughs> MP9. Frozen. It's not that for the first time we've seen some long range MP9 action. That's two of them in the round. And maybe Device. Oh, he wasn't expecting Carrigan coming up the fence. A good swing. And Mouse Sports, they are really twisting the knife now. By keeping these players alive, they've still got an AK-47. That's still Glaives from round two. They'll keep hold of that as much as they can. An AWP in play, and AWP gets all perfect weaponry for the job, and just a half-health Glaive holding for Carrigan's push. It could be a start. And a nice crouch from Carrigan makes it all the more difficult. Look at this. This is the dream start for Mouse Sports, both fragging and rounds. 10k in the bank on CT side nuke. You cannot complain, as Rops does invest. All right, well, this is... Definitely not the start I'm sure Astralis were hoping for is those little jiggles there from Frozen. It must be so annoying. You know, just getting peppered and you're like, oh, man. Now he's hyping him up. Yeah, you want to try and keep your foot on the gas as much as possible and see how many CT rounds Malice can get. Nine or ten would be fantastic. I used to talk about the old Astralis and limiting them to six or less on their T-halves. They're just so good at controlling the rotations, the different smoke walls, but the map has evolved. Everyone's learned how to play at a high level here on Nuke. Speaking of smoke walls, here's one being lined up. They fly through the sky. Looks like three players have intention to use the L block. Frozen now, tucking in over towards CT spawn, just making sure he can't lose a rifle yeah, in this warehouse. Is the first time Mouse don't have info behind those smokes. Truly the first time. Frozen's previously been there to confirm it. They know that Frozen does like to play this warehouse position, so noting that he's not home, they're unable to steal away a rifle. But how long do they want to wait? There's a minute on the clock. Secret control has also been garnered. This is scary. It is. Nice shots. Bomb spotted. Spray not there. Dupree manages to hit and stabilizes Deagle's shot, but Magis still yet to frag and... That's extended by Bemis's M4. Now sports a much more regimented squad so far here on the defense. Stratus probably aiming for getting that six. Chad used to set a marker on Astralis's T side saying, if you want to win a nuke versus Astralis, you've got to do so by keeping their T side honest. Of course, many years and many months have passed since that first comparison was made, but now sports so far so good in that objective. Well, Carrigan's yet to die, so he's having a fun time out there. You've got nine kills for Frozen, four apiece for Rops, and Chris and Beamass is on the board now. I know it sounds a bit redundant, um, but is this the kind of juncture where you'd consider a timeout, or is that not really going to get you anything? They've only had uh, one gun round so far, so I think after this one, if it doesn't work, then yeah, take a timeout just to discuss some options. But they haven't been able to establish too many patterns. They haven't been able to force rotations. The fights really come to them. So Astralis, whatever the game plan was, it hasn't been able to work off the bat. They need to force Mouse to respect them. And it looks like they've actually disrupted the smoke wall there. We heard that extinguish. So there's another smoke drops. So that's a first blood in favor of Astralis forward change. Zipex that won the duel on the ramp. Aggression. Chris J this time forced to watch as the sixth round plays out. Looks like they're setting up for a top piece, or at least gesturing that might be the end goal. Yeah, Bemis will have to turn this flash. And now he can fight. Perfect, perfect from Bemis. He gets two, tucking in. The fragging does come back in favor of Astralis, but it's always the Carrigan vent arrival that's got them many times. This time he only gets the one, so Frozen. They know he's the yard player, and Glaive tucking into Tetris for now. Device on that squeaky line. You win this. Oh, he's won the first duel at what cost, though? 30 HP. Frozen started off nuke so strong. He can clutch up now for Mouse. 10 kills, needs his 11th. Glaive, paranoid. Timing. And the execution. Glaive holding his nerve in the line. He'll pick up some nades for his troubles, but that's Astralis' first. 
Yeah, good stuff there. To the close first death for Carrigan. Yeah, okay, well... It had to happen eventually. I was surprised he was the one who was seen as the immortal so far for Mouse Sports. But this is where we get to see the mind games of this, because I'm sure that Carrigan has a few tricks up his sleeve to deal with the standard play from Astralis. Haven't actually had to use it just yet, other than that aggressive yard and Frozen being a nuisance on the MP9. Well, he's no longer operating on that. Org for Carrigan, Orp for Chris J. Rifles for the other three. And as we get underway with round number seven, Australians have to be very careful in their approach because Mouseports are starting to warm on into this and Chris J is even looking for some impact. Orp towards Yard, her vision will be obscured. Ooh, he's taking a lot of chances, I like it. Just confirms nothing silo and now he can focus his attention on the Red Cross, albeit smoked. You don't often see device operating on a Mac-10. He's uh, got the job of dealing with the vent rotation at the moment. Smokes have cleared and space hasn't been taken. Astralis are just hiding in plain sight. Glaive behind the red box, Megas behind main. And they just wait for Mouse Sports to try and grab back some info. They've had to rotate Frozen towards lower. They have re respected the smoke wall. Chris J's even rotated off. So Yard is now free. And if they want to go straight in towards main, BMS will be on top of Hunt. Carrigan behind the bomb box and then Carrigan swinging from heaven. Looks like that's the plan. Here we go. Swinging in from main. Bemus is tested, and again he passes. It's going to be found by Glaive. The trade's working for Astralis. They have the numbers. Missed shot. Chris naded down. The Molly will likely delay the plan. But they got top side control here. A one way being dropped by Chris J. Drops to profit from it. They haven't planted. What's stopping Zipex from punching in the digits here? The one way, perhaps. More flashes, they know Heaven's a threat. Zipex, get that bomb down, dude. Main is still an issue. And in comes Ropsy, catches one. Dupree does manage to catch the defensive frag. And now the bomb can go in. Chris J might want to keep hold of his orb here. He's been found by Dupree, frozen the last man. And maybe, just maybe, he can recover and maintain his M4. I think that's about the best case scenario. Dupree's already really got himself up on silo. Oh, he's been spotted though. Good eyes, Frozen, very good eyes. Yeah, well, now that they know where he is, they can make sure they can grab some rifles and hide as well because the money yet to build for Astralis and Frozen's won a couple of banger clutches in Nuke in recent times. It's quite the angle from Zipex. Just locking him in, making sure there can't be too much punishment. Device has gone out scavenging, found himself an org. Glaive's found himself an AK. Zipex picked up that M4 and the bomb goes off. Looks like Frozen will be staying alive and important for him to save this. He needs to drop a gun to BMAS and then upgrade again himself. And they need one more round, Astralis, to break the economy of Mouse Sports. They've done so with two top hits, different formations, different looks, but still just as potent. And one of the keys there, you're right, I, I think you were bang on with the discussion with the one way. It, that gives the chance for the CTs to look for kills. And as soon as they hear the bomb suddenly get planted, they know that they could be up for some 1v1 jewels or isolating right. three right. 1v1 jewels because it would have been a three on three during the bomb plant. Frozen's Molly again. They've actually mollied out towards top silo as well. So here comes the smoke wall. They've managed to wait out that early utility. That's left mouse sports with no incendiaries to operate with. Just a bunch of smokes and flashes. So Chris has gone full investment into getting info on red and the fact he's seen nothing yet might imply the CT should ready for a top hit. Dupree and Hut. Bemis previously has been playing rafters very well. This time he's on the throw ground floor. You can hear the nades starting to come. Trying to find a safe haven. Carrigan does evade the molly, but it's all smoke and mirrors and perfect. Rob's to be tested now. He's on ramp and he's done well to fire off a dink. Glaive working with three HP and he's got Zipex on the drop as well. Rob's, he's so calm, but it does get overwhelming. I like Frozen's position here. He could be on for oh, a multi-kill. The spray is good. Not good enough. And Bemis on the top site revealed he's still there. Look how low they all are. Does Bemis go for this? It's a young stud. Does he risk going for a retake in this kind of a situation? I just said that their money's going to be broken. This AK could be so valuable in the next round, but with the HP that Magus, Device, and Glaive are operating with... I know, right? Tempting. Yeah, you'd really, if he knew, he'd really probably have a crack at this. So he's opted for the percentage play. We didn't catch it there. And that was at no fault of Mr. Rushley's. It was just there was multiple frags happening at once. And as Glaive has pivoted down from Megaton, he has ripped Chris J's head off in that window side. It was just an instant frag. And that could have been the difference maker. If Chris had survived, slowed them down, maybe done a bit more damage, you can see how low they already are. Oof. 
Could have been a Mouse Sports round, but that's going to be the third now for Astralis as they march forward three consecutive after a great start from Mouse. Now you can see this money that they're operating with. 2,400 on Carrigan. That's the low end. And the AK-47 saved. That's the high end. This is the shot from Glaive. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, yeah. He was moving. Practically still touching W. That was the most important frag right there. Uh, let's not forget that what was so important about that round in Astralis' playbook was that it's managed to break Mouse Sports. By winning three consecutively, they finally exhausted the macroeconomic bonus. The Mouse managed to accrue. And hello, Frozen, once again with his aggressions. He tends to find something here, oh, and they've got nades that. with his name on it. Timing's everything. He's got a little bit of a gap. Does he go over? Glaive is the one to hold it, so... Timing is everything. Uh-oh, Clay finds him. Rops was holding secret though, and that CZ's only gonna get him the one. So early frags favoring uh, the Astralis squad. Zipex is still responsible for any lobby pushes. You can see how passive he's holding that. Giving nothing up for free here. It's fitting that it's Glaive looking for Frozen in the smoke. <laughs> <Yeah, true. laughs> the man who gets all the smoke kills. But look at this, they call lobby clear. Zipex is holding it from such a, a passive standpoint. His only objective is to stop the out yard, the yard flank, and I think Chris J may very well be not too long for this world. Yeah. You can now Carrigan. Does he hear them mantling up? They're going for a heaven top sight wrap. And as he peeks out, he will spot Glaive. Oh, no, 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 no. Far from the one. <laughs> Peering oh. down the ladder. Death you want, and Bemis is equipped with that save day, Kay. They know where you are now. Found him out. Nice little jiggle. Puts him into notice. Oh, and that a little wall bang as well. How, how far away can you get, Bemis? Because they know where you are, they know what you have, and they're looking for you. <laughs> oh, every ground he's covered is quickly tracked. They've got their nose to the ground. Oh. Gets tracking down. Look at the dogs. Place. Yeah, he's definitely procedurally hunting on Beamers. I can see him. I can smell him. But he does manage to find that initial hunter. Astralis have got a bit more freedom to uh, lock him in here. Zipex has got lobby on lock and looks like he'll just press pause here. So I think Beamers has got this one. There is more time, but the yeah, Astralis boy is happy to just press pause after the initial hunt. Yeah, Glaive's not pushing the issue right now. It's just going to stand his ground. If he must looks in for a little bit more, he might get another kill, you know? He won't be able to pull it off. Zipex is going to get his second in the round. And it looks like we've had a player drop out here. The HUD currently showing two Zipexes. So it might just be a bit of a technical issue as we just go back over the highlights of the previous. And this was Mousebots operating with the saved AK-47 and just the pistol. So wow, not too much to work on him with. Three hours ago, um, I've just seen the Counter-Strike once again hit a million player peak. It's pretty crazy, right? That we're Current. still being able to hover around that. It's going to be even better when they do the 128 tick servers Rush is talking about. Yeah, Rush keeps banging on about it. Every day on the drive home. It's like, trust me, guys. Tick update. It's not happening. It's just not going to happen. I don't know why you keep saying I don't know why you're putting out me now as well, Chad. You're the one that's saying it. People are, are DMing me saying, oh, man, 128, I can't wait, Are they wait, really? Man. Yeah, man. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to clear this up. I don't know if there's 128 tick servers. I have a feeling that Valve, because of Valorant, need to make a bit of a play. And if I was ever going to make a play, it would be 128 tick servers and a revamp matchmaking. A guy can dream. All right, let a boy dream. I can dream. Okay. Something to do when don't you... Don't DM Rush. Tweet at me. Global, global Elite. I'm used to the hate. Rush is not. He's a precious little flower. So nice. let's, let's just have four in a row now. Yeah, they, well, they definitely have turned the 5-0 completely on its head. Now, the Wall of Smokes is deployed, and the only gap to uh, punish that would have been heaven. That's what Device is pre-aiming. Chris is working with a slither gap on the cross. How many toes are you going to spot? Definitely one. Ooh, one, he's... one little booty. Ooh. And a second little booty. He's seen two. On the cross, there's more where that came from. And they cross a, and pause. Astralis wanting these peaks to be delivered. Rops isn't giving it to them, nor is Chris. Imagine if Rops speaks from heaven right now. He's going to get a rude shock. Yeah, I don't know if Rops is uh, interested in any of that funny business. You can see how this plays out now. This is high-level Counter-Strike. They're not re-picking. They understand what they've lost. They understand how far that they can peak. It's a bit of a stalemate. As Astralis are more than happy just to make them consider, look at all the utility Astralis have with 50 seconds left on the clock, and they've got so much space. Yeah, Frozen's jumping for info on that lower site. Yet to call for help, but Glaive's working on his decon. 
and just trying to make it look as threatening as possible as they start their move towards heaven. A late 30 seconds. Oh, another flub jump. Could we stop? Chris hasn't reacted yet, but... Props must know, surely. Yeah. Props? Props? Didn't hear it. Okay, well, nope, not going to be punishing that today. Chris has got to react. Carrigan does as well. That's heaven starting to be an issue. 20 seconds. Gets awkward if Dupree doesn't find that frag. Bemis is on the site. A flash will force him to turn away, and that's a good frag from Bemis. No one could punish. He gets his vision back. Device overwhelms him with a swing on the P250, and they get that bomb down with three seconds to spare. Oh, no. A miss from Chris and a chance gone awry. It's only frozen, and he's coming in from the ramp room. A little late to the party. People are already leaving. People are already partnered up. He's opening his first drink and realizing he'd rather just save it. All that energy for another party another day. Yeah, should not have gotten in that Uber. Yeah, just shouldn't have. It home. wasn't worth it. You knew you, you were late to the party anyway. It's probably best. You just, uh, you know, you get one of your friends to give you like a, a room temp reading. Like, what are we thinking? You always need to check in. Honestly, that's that, that's how I know who my real friends are, is that when it's a night out, you can get an honest answer. Chad, you were asking me the other day. I was like, you know, it, it's a 50-50. It's a coin toss. Probably not worth it's it. Probably not worth it. <laughs> Bomb goes off, round on the board, and now it's five straight from Bowser to five straight from Astralis. And, well, the key to being on the T side is having control of that economy. Things do not cost as much. It's as simple as that. I have a lot of people tweeting at me today asking if I understand the economy. Maybe not in the real world, but I definitely do in Counter-Strike. And Mouse Sports, they have to take a bit of a timeout because there's a lot of things to discuss. There's a lot of things to go through. As Chris, his little table, they're getting quite messy. You know, it's a banana peel on there as well. And with this timeout, they need to decide what they want to do. They have one saved rifle. Does Rops really have 166 ADR? What? Surely not. Uh, no, we had a player disconnect, so it does uh, mess up those numbers just a little bit. Okay, so I have to remember those. that. I'm sorry, Rush. No worries. It won't happen again. Please don't hit me. No worries. No worries, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's just going to be the partial investment. CZ75, <sighs> Eagle. It's more of the same. This is all it felt like for Mouse Sports on Dust 2. Yeah, I mean, but they got off to such a great start here. Keeping Astralis honest is half the game on CT side and a very fast top take. This is rare and look what it's done. It opens up very nicely for Carrigan. He practically gets two kills, 1.9 kills. Supri working on that 10 HP. And then after the initial aggressions, they like to lock it down. Throw out all that util they haven't had to use to get space. And then you just kind of feel like an idiot. Staring at a smoke, watching that bomb plant tick away. I guess they could drop the one way again from Frozen. Yeah, you're right. And he's got the M4 as well. So if he just pushes on that, there's the uh, one way. Rob's maybe swinging in first, making the call. Maybe even finding that low HP Dupree. Hang on, he's maybe. Tired. Don't Ask pick this do Dupree. Something. Yeah, when the one way's up, you don't want to be giving them that duel. He's staring right at you. Dropping into the site now. Dupree will be found, and Rops has got the crucial frag. He can get some pressure on the bomb now, but it is planted for main side. And Rops hits another. This is starting to look winnable, but they just don't have the time. No one's on it. It's good damage. Glaive will go down with a blast. And Bemis, he recovers an AWP at last, but six for Astralis in a row. So competitive at least, and competitive yeah. finally. They could still bounce back and grab nine within this half, but it needs to start here for Mouse. This fast top approach was almost completely stifled by Carrigan. If he made that second kill, this would have been on. They would have really had a big crack at this. But good damage, and if they do start mounting this comeback, it will be important to be finding more and more Astralis players. Let's take a look. It's a double orb setup, so Rob's opting to buy into one as well. Utilities dump towards Hut and Squeaky just to make sure they can't be punished with the top rush again. Nades are limped on out towards Yard and Magus. There is a huge gap there, my yeah. friend. I think he spotted that and will have to drop one of his own. So they've used anything, four smokes. That's more convincing now. You've got Util being deployed to confirmation that there's a player red container. Frozen's definitely going to be staying lower now. And even dropping his smoke very early into the piece. Magisk will relay that information. Lower hit? What do you think? Oh, they're going to go out ramp, and they can get past Rops if they drop some picture-perfect utility, but only one smoke to work with, and they haven't dropped it. That's Zipak's body that it's on. And it's a flash, and a molly does deter. Rops has found a great shot, though, and now Mouse have an advantage. How long can they hold on to it? Will Device really want to peek into heaven? That's exactly what he's being held. What? Device gets him out orped by the Danish Orpa. Two in low sight right now. 
Carrigan's flirting with the both of them. Frozen wants to deny and at least confirm that there's nothing secret, but Magisk on his departure meets Chris. And so ramp into the lower site, but not your usual defense. There is a lot of casualty already for Astralis. They're making lots of sound here, making it very clear what they intend to do. And oh, Device hits the toes of Frozen. He gets tagged to Come one. On Maybe Astralis can win this, but it feels like Mouse Sports, especially doubling up on this decon push. It comes down to fragging, and they're going to peek behind this flash. Glaive, both there. They get them both. No way. He loses a lot of health, but that could practically seal the deal of the seventh T round. Chris is working on a push as well. Glaive wants the info. He's gone down. Will he expect Dupree? Nice shots. One on one. Bomb ticking. A fake and device. Oh, rather Dupree confirms it with the door jiggle, trying to knock off that defuse. He's going to call the bluff oh. and Carrigan's got time. Huge stuff from Carrigan there. It's Big win. Defuse. Yeah, well, very well done. I cannot believe that uh, Dupree's committed to that one right there. I thought he'd go for another jump, another jiggle. Yeah, he opened the door just a little too, too uh, open. He was just so exposed, a full body visible. He saw the first way he peeked it. He was practically hidden behind the door. Now you can see from this perspective, it's a perfect clutch from Carrigan. Dupree just plays into his hands. And yeah, he tried to go for the frag there. Didn't want to be diffused in front of. That's the beauty of the door. All right, well, a good round. Mauser back. We that. spoke about this comeback and the potential for it begins. Tied things up, 6-6, six, six, going into round 13. The buys are good for both sides, but ramp progression rocks. You're about to be caught. No, what? Mm, Course sounds, corrects. Yeah, great adjustment. Zipex just started pulling the trigger on the step and Rops adjusts so quick. Okay, well, that's another number advantage. They picked up the first onto Zipex last round as they pushed out ramp. This time they took the fight to Zipex at ramp and they've got the same result. But there's no map territory for Astralis. They don't have somebody down secret. They don't have somebody to worry about in the back lines. And with a minute 15, Astralis need to get a move on. Lining up these smokes again. It's a passive setup. Chris J with the AWP in towards the lower. Good weapon for the job. Take a shot, fall back to the next line, rinse and repeat until you feel pressured to drop that smoke. But look at this, device the rifler. Taking a lot of space towards ramp. We'll have to clear the back box to deal with Rops and he might even jiggle to the left. Will he pick out to the right? They're not clearing him. They're not looking oh, for Rops. Rops, this is such a round winner. He's gonna get the bomb carrier in Dupree. Device, device has slipped the net though. And okay. No way. There's, there's, there's no way that Dupree doesn't get spotted here. Aha, uh, uh -huh. bomb spotted going lower. Rops can convey it. Oh, he doesn't hit the shot just yet. Dupree completely unknown. And Rops, what felt like a potential disadvantage could now be even more. No one expecting this frag and boom, one shot is all he releases. Glaive's been in warehouse this whole time. If he could just catch that first, vent rotate, he's even mollied it. And Rops continues to be a thorn in their side. Finally, Huge. he needs a shot from Device, but it is all on to Device. He has the util, not only to get the bomb down, but to escape. Doesn't use his smoke, and that cost him his life. Uh, I don't think he was expecting so many bodies on the scene so quickly. And that by Rops, he's dancing with the devil right there. Yeah, Every right. timing you were checking, that he was making sure that players weren't getting around to ladder. It's very curious to see two players walk down ramp without a single sound cue. That was very unusual in itself. But Rops with a 3k, an absolute hero here. Grab the first. This is what set us into the 4v5 number advantage, four mounts. The second was in the back of the dome. Dupree's bomb spotted in the middle of the site and nobody with him. And this one from Chris J. If he went down, there yeah. would have been a real chance. Different round altogether. Good stuff, though. We keep it competitive. And Mousebot's keeping control of this CT side. After finding so much damage early, they're able to profit from it here. In the closing stages of our second map of our second series. I am Beijing, Haiyan online. Four teams locked in from Group A. We're looking pretty set to start off Group B with a bang. Yeah, I think if we do get Heroic, which was already locked, and now Astralis, that are the two best teams from Group B. And then the third and fourth spots are kind of up for who's in form. Yeah, and I think I've liked what I've seen from NIP. I want to see a bit more. Obviously, they have to win one more best of three. Uh, they will be in the lower bracket now waiting for their opponent. And Mouse Sports, well, against Big, it was a good, it was a big win. Let's be honest here. There was a 16-4 victory over there on Inferno, bouncing back in, in form. So I want to see more from them as well. But this series isn't done just yet. No they might way. be able to push Astralis to a third. Yeah, it's far from over. Astralis with the conservative 2K, buying down to 2K. And they've got Util and four smokes. So they've been so relentlessly throwing these outside smokes. Can't imagine that they're 
going to have a round without them. No one's in front of that wall, but Chris is... Oh, that's a frag and a half, oh, isn't it? Oh, mate. Oh, Glaive. Oh, mate. He's just opened up the half. He's opened up the round. It's two early frags on the mouse sports defense in the top side. Bemis is holding the line. Dupree oh. just denies it. And this one, red-faced. It's a bit embarrassing unless Carrigan can dig him out. This is good. This is really good. They're dropping low sight. He did get dinged down to 19, but they have got some space now. A bomb plant and device on the AWP. Where do you play your after plant? With a bomb planted so poorly for ramp. He's going to hop for decon. decon. Yeah. And it's a close quarters engagement. It will enable him to lock down Carrigan's rotate through secret, but he hasn't gone for it. Instead, after faking the steps, he's opted for vents. And that could be Zipex's freebie. Can't <laughs> get freer than that. And Robs is walking in from ramp. You you know where he was previously. He can't go for this. Yeah, he just doesn't have the utility. Doesn't have the smoke or the kit. I'll just have to accept that Astralis are going to take seven in this T half. And it's thanks to Glaive. I mean, that. how do you analyze that one, Chad? <laughs> uh, he shot them yeah. in the head. Yeah, twice. That right there is such a rough way to go for Maus because you look at the buy that Astralis came into that round with. Most people are sitting there considering, okay, Maus have won the half. They've got eight here. Maybe this gets close. Maybe so, the bomb goes so down. Chris J, I can't even fault him for holding, you know, the AWP towards Squeaky. He was just a little too far gone, though. So exposed that after missing your first shot, he's practically booked. Carrigan, I love the one way he's created there. You can see, you can just see the toes as they cross, hiding in the guise of the smoke on hut. Energy seems high in both camps. It's a 7-7 seven, seven half. I understand why. Now, Sport's got the double orb, but small sacrifice and all by Dupree. That's what you want from Chris J. A almost flawless start as he swings into the decon, excuse me, secret position now heading that way. I love how he's just hit the shot and now he's completely repositioning. Yep. This has gone all the way back towards ramp. Now he can ult from ladder, but it's too little too late. They've already made it past. They'll be down secret. But look where the bomb is. Still in T spawn. Zipex, you cannot join the rest of your teammates. Oh, he's not going to try, is he? I think he just has to hope that they can cause a ruckus lower to force a rotation and then he can pivot late. That's the only option he has. And check out all this utility for Astralis. They can sell that this is a lower play. Zipex just can't die. If Zipex goes down, that's the round lost. Yeah, and he's realized that, so silently sitting with Oh, Chris Rops. J broke that so for them. Disconnect. <gasps> yeah, that's the barrel. That's the tip. Oh, no. Rops, they know exactly where you are. Glaive silently advances. There's no info. Oh, and he gets it on the turn. Magisk was holding it, too. All the way through the lower side. Now the CTs. That's the, the pressure you were waiting for. Device spotted one. Dropping his incendiary, at least buys a little time. Zipex, don't forget, has the bomb. Where does he go? I don't know. 35 seconds. Zipex is still in lobby with the bomb. They're going down vents. Flashed his teammate on the way down. <gasps> and Vemus, there we go. Now he's caught the secret drop and all of them committing to the There's lower the drop. And here they come. <laughs> Astralis galloping up to the top side. And that's a shot. Go on, Chris, win the round. Magis does manage to keep it 2v2. Bomb needs to go down thanks to Zipex. This has been a really frustrating round for Mouse to play against. Magis missing the timing. Frozen hitting the shot. And it falls to Magis. Only seven frags. These last two, though, could be everything. Frozen was holding it and they will win the half. By a now swing, it's Mouse Sports, eight to seven. And the defuse does come in and nuke. Second, second map of the series, practically inseparable. We'll be breaking it all down and going into the second half after a short break.
between the strobe lights and honey Black face, hey, follow me around, okay, ah uh. Black face, hey, follow me around, okay, ah uh. Used to want it bad, used to want it bad, but ah uh. Got too much up on my plate, now I can't think I said, woke up, take a X and now I'm feeling this is it Want the money, want the rest I do purse, not no sets They say, Don, it's why you sat I said, I just need to think Well then, folks, we've got a very hard game to call. It's Astralis up against Mouse Sports, and though Astralis have proven that they have come in hot, have come in capable, taking Mouse Sports away, and Mouse Sports pick away from them, Dust 2. Nuke has proven to be certainly a little closer. Admittedly, that was T-side Nuke, which you'd expect to be seeing a good close half out of any team seeing the advancement of this map and its biases. Now, plenty of util for the T-side. Nice to see Carrigan with a similar mindset to that of Astralis. What's his plans, though? It's going to be two smokes for the cross. They actually plan to go down secret without side smokes on the pistol. They push lobby fast. Device is aware of what's going down here, and they jump over his taps. Four across. Rops is the unknown entity. And, oh, Device knew what was up. Into the low sight, though, and Dupree tapping away at a couple. Pressure coming his way, oh. and oh, they pre-fire that so hard. Close the door behind you, young man. Oh, Bemis has opened the door. Finally, they find Dupree on his retreat, and now they've got control. Mouse, four on four. Bomb planted. Carrigan gets it down, despite Magis spotting him out. And it's an important duel to win here, Magis. He knows he's vulnerable to the decon swing. Needs to knock Carrigan off his perch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. A double. And I think Bemus knows his days are numbered. Needs to find Zipex, has done so. On the bomb. A kit. No kit, you're right. And if he just takes it, he's practically gaming them here. Magisk has no HP and he's lined it up perfect. He's looking to deny the 10 second defuse. Magis still holding it and device babysits. Well handled by them and just by the smallest of margins, you can see one bullet would have been enough to take Magisk out and make that 10 second defuse a real threat. I cannot believe the two shots that Magus just hit there. That is absolutely goddamn absurd. He copped a goosh in this. Watch, he recovered from that? I'm sorry, what? That is insane. Absolutely mental stuff there as they get the pistol and yeah, I'd be frustrated too. Oh. How the hell does that happen? Yeah, I mean, even Rops' death is a frustrating one. You know, yeah. like you've got four cross secret and Device is just staring at this super late arrival. Oh, that frag is huge. And that, well, it hasn't said Echoes down the Mouse Sports camp just yet. They will be able to invest in because of the plant and their buy looks good. It looks better. They do have an... Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Okay, Devin. Chris was mad. 
going to be in the last round, imagine now. Yeah, that's going to really salt the wound. He's got 29 HP, poor Ropsy after finding the equalizer. Now, Frozen is in a position to punish the walk up here, but Glaive's managing to get the timing just about right. He's just into red in time. Bemis was holding the push. Ooh. A dink exchange go on for the dunk. Not quite. But that's going to deter outside. All those smokes are in vain. You've got nothing out of that. Glaive knows exactly what's up. Into lobby then. So is it ramp or is it top? That's the question. I just look at their health, bro. Frozen and Carrigan are going to have to surely be baited in by the low HP Beamer strafe. He's going to do his best, of course. And then the health, full HP of the other two. Well, Beamus doesn't last long. Magisk, more tests. Carrigan, next on the list. He's handled this with beauty, with class. Frozen's on the site. He's very low, five HP. Shouldn't be much more now with a fully locked in squad as Zipex's nade is there. And that is one of the many Mouse Sports members knocked onto his bottom. Chris J, let's, let's see this flick again. Oh, bloody hell, bloody hell device. That's a quick one. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, Schadenfreude. What are you meant to do? Yeah, laughing at the misfortune of others. Yikes. Okay. Mouse Sports now likely to concede a tenth. Astralis. Their buy looks strong. They're just up against Glocks, some Deagles, and a Scout. Glaive is tucked on into the Red Pole side of Warehouse. And the initial exchange of smokes has meant that Mouse Sports cannot continue forward with much pace. They need to wait for that one to clear. Carrigan just drawing some eyes towards Squeaky Door while the remainder of his squad walk, walk in unison. So Device is actually holding that with the M4. That's a long range duel. I'd have it's, to squint. It's quite the crossfire partnered with Glaive. If Robs gets a chance to take this fight against Device... Ooh, I'd favor uh, Robs. Yeah, the scout, he's clearing that angle, and he's Great even shot. made the frag. That is huge. Robs just got some revenge for Chris J in the previous. Yeah, and that's spurred Dupree away from Squeaky. He wants to assist. Harrigan's parked up. Glaive reveals he's there to hold, and... Oh, Dupree's been spotted. I think so. Frozen, just the tip of his head on that main roof. It's a hard shot. Glaive desperately, he's getting so many attempts. But they are retooling, and so are Astralis. They realize that now numbers can be used to Mouseport's advantage. Though they don't have the dollar sign numbers in their favor, they do now have the bodies. I don't like their chances against Magisk, though. Now I do. He's got so many targets, too many targets. He's only going to get the one. Glaive looking to stabilize. A double kill, a crucial one. Chris J's hit a dink. It does bring him down to 50. It's manageable now. But they're both coming from upper and they're not checking on Beamass. How does he get away with that? One on one. Zipex pulls it out of the bag eventually. So messy, though, at the end of that one. There's the AK found by our observer team. Zipex the same. <sighs> Mouse, they got that so close. You're going to be kicking yourself. Yeah, you'd be very happy with that. All things considered. Bomb down, four casualties. Teamwork aplenty. I love the way that Carrigan breaks the vent open squeaky to draw the attention of Dupree to get the opening. Allows Frozen to drop down behind and find themselves a much needed kill. Mega swarmed out of position and then Zipex, yeah, knowing the Glock was below him, no dramas dropping on and catches them off guard. Another close but no cigar round, at least for Mouse Sports. They've been able to keep this economy quite honest. And for them, they are going to have the better buy. Ought for device. Rifles are up. Utility is low, but Mouse Sports are rocking everything they need. Outside, and they want to contest it. The CT's bringing the fight. The nade indicates they're coming. Frozen, however, has handled the first with brilliance. The bomb's loose in yard. Dupree still sticking around. He's managed to find a good line of sight. A dunk from Zipex. The nade is good. This is suppressing fire of a different breed and well someone on the voiceover internet protocols from the danes has said full back mission accomplished and devices pushed up trophy as well and yeah, they've pushed them away from yard let's see if they can push them back into the star orpa the bomb is down as well currently in the hands of the cts but they don't want to hold it and for good reason it's in no man's land that would make it very easy for mouse sports to start searching and isolating the potential hidey holes Smoke towards the Red Cross, Molotov to dissuade anyone who wants to be hyper-aggressive. But they do need to pick up that bomb. Device, in the meantime, taking more space. But this position from Rops, actually quite dastardly. If Device was to push, it's going to be difficult for him to clear angles at 90 degrees. He can't go secret. He can't go main. You've got 45 seconds. Might have to go through him, Alex. 
Can't go mm. over him, can't go under him. Yeah, okay. I see where you're going. Oh, that's enough, Zipex. That's enough of that. Util dropped. They're trying to get across, but are they ready for Dupree? Elevated position as well. Finding one would secure them the round. They've only got 20 seconds and they've got been given nothing. Absolutely nothing. Here they come. And Rops finding one. Zipex looks away just for the second he needed to. Dupree, a crucial frag, but Chris J's got the one necessary. Now he can get that bomb down. They've got 10 seconds. Device is in a position to deny it. It'll have to be a plant front of sight. Five, four. That's the shot he had to hit. Round one. Rops can't do anything. And that is quite the clutch. Stylish as you like. A single deagle bullet puts the 11th on the board for Astralis. Lovely way to do it. I bet he wishes every round could be just that easy. And Astralis right now are poised. Their money still terrible. Haven't been able to build a bank. They have been kept more than honest. But as these rounds keep mounting up, frustration does for mouse sports. They're going to be able to purchase back. Astralis are the ones taking the time out to discuss their options. And they're able to crowd control very well in Yard, just dissuading mouse sports for at least the first minute of the round. And then they bounce back again with another nail biter. How Series is close. Code? Yeah. House bots just need to find the recipe for success on this attack. So at the moment, we haven't seen a mouse sports T round. It was eight, seven, half. So you can do the maths and uh, we're heading into our 20th round with everything they could possibly desire outside of a couple of extra nades. Chris J doesn't get the bells and whistles. I'm curious if they get the respect towards Yard now, because we just saw hyper aggression from Astralis. Mouse sports might want to try their luck out there again. And the reason I say that is because of the Chris J orb. If they had rifles, maybe something quicker or something more of a ramp lean. But it's back towards Yard and they're going fast, just like the pistol round. Yeah, this time there isn't that aggressive Danish hold. Glaive's going to try and slow them down. He decides against it as the smoke already arrives. That's a lot of a yard control for the T's. Oh, Glaive. Oh, he's found a gap in the smoke. Is he serious? Yeah. He's a madman. He's taken that fight, and he's managed to get his team an early man advantage, despite what looked like a perfect start from Mouse. Now, Rob's lingering in the smoke. He's been getting the better of uh, old Zipex. And again, it feels like he's just conceded it through a little bit of a flub of the movement there. I don't mind if Zipex just turtles up lower with Glaive here. You look at his HP. No, oh, you look at that info. <laughs> Hello. Come Hi, boys. Down. I found you. They're what? going decon. They can't surely go for only decon B take. That's a hard one. And that's a shot missed by Chris J. Glaive continues to get more information from that window position. And Dupree is locking the door behind them. I'm not sure how they break in here without any smokes to, to do anything with. Obscuring vision is difficult. They have to win fights. Yeah, but where do the fights come from? You've got three CTs locking you down. Oh, here we go. Nice from Dupree. Oh, and there's more. They're trying to bail out. It cost them two players just to leave that lower site. Magisk tucked in on the CT vent. It's a perfect position to do so. One squeak, one main, and the wall bank's great. Magisk is so low. He does do a little bit of damage, but they're coming up the vents fast. And on the reload, they punish. Frozen thrust into a clutch. He needs an ace clutch, but is exposed. Glaive spots him. 14 seconds, and they need to stop this plant. Here he comes again. <laughs> <laughs> Devices dig, denies another. You can't believe it. You couldn't script it. The man just walking through the heart. He's got the biggest, most expensive gun in the game, and he's coming through with a deagle, able to confirm another round for Astralis here. And that price of admission, Dupree, he's going to charge you, and he's going to charge you through the roof here. Two massive kills. And that denied Mouse Sports really any advantages they had in this one. Just getting pantsed again. Oh boy, oh boy. Close rounds, but still. They're getting the, just the edge every time. The competitive edge, the time. They're exploiting those finer details. Bemis' PC matches his jersey. It's my top tier analysis. And it will be Tech Nines and Armor. Carrigan just trying to throw a bit of pace at them, perhaps. You've got Galil and Bemis and a full investment from him, so. Well, that's interesting. So the plan is a must for Bemis to be able to buy next round. Uh, 3,400 loss. I reckon a hard top's on the cards. A hard top or a vent drop. Something quicker, something pace changey. Maybe just leave Yard for a bit. It's not been the one. Smoke's being lined up. Lobbed on out. Is there commitment behind this? No. Just one player on top of Silo. That's frozen. Everybody else back through lobby. They could have luck towards Zipex at ramp, who hasn't been having a great time. But it looks like they're setting up for a late top piece. Glaive, ladder noise may have been heard. Carrigan now lining up some utility. Has been able to get his crosser in the right place just before their smoke dropped. 
They have to respect that for now. But like five seconds on the fade, he might swing the door open and use it as a guise to drop his own. If we can re-smoke this. Just as Carrigan pulled out his, he's forced to extend. You must wait, and they will. 30 seconds, pressing pause. Dupree makes a lot of noise on the exit. I don't think there's a molly for his position, so they will just be flooding out through Hut and Squeaky. If the bomb drops vent, they will have an avenue towards Ooh, lower. Frozen could maybe get his molly. I don't know how good it's going to be. Yeah, he's throwing it. Rops is. Flashes are there. Magisk. Oh, no. Fully flashed on the rafters. This is great from Mouse. Dupree tucks in. He's hoping to punish that plant, and he will. At least try. Knocks Bind Bemis off the plant, and now he's got the frag as well. Doesn't find the third adjustment. It is a 3v3. Mousebot's making a lot with a little here. Rob's finding Dupree, shutting him down, keeps us in a level, pegging. Oh, hi, Rob's. Glaive reveals himself. What is that? Zimpex Kratos trying to unload his mag. Eight seconds. They want to deny the plant, but Chris J's oh. got it, and Rob punishes. Device, not another deagle round. This time, he'd need a lot more than just the one. Oh, oh, and he's taken off Rob's his head. That was the hard part. It's only Chris dropping the AWP. Wants the shot, but he can't hit it. Can't connect it. The Dutchman with three HP pulls a must win out of the bag. And that's the first T round for Mouse. And it's broken Estrella. So you can see why they wanted to get these buys, why they were really pushing the issue here. This is Mouse Sport's chance in map number two. It's their chance to stay alive. Dupree did so much here. The fact he was able to dance around the top site and even make that situation interesting, that was something special. But Estrella... Maybe too tricky for their own good. Could have played the post plant. Could have let them get it down. Instead, they've just given up a key round here and have had to force by back. So if they lose this, it'll be the eco in round number 23. And Mouse Sports will just be one round away from tying this up. Now they can continue with some confidence. They've kept it close. They've kept it competitive. And now they've broken through that wall. Yeah, this was what they were waiting for. It's their turn. Glaive, you're so dead. He's going to have multiple swing on him. It is the one for one. Device found a gap on credit card and Frozen's shots aren't finding him either. So, Bomb's going down lower. Bemis holding the guard. And that's a big duel to be winning. So, Device no longer has the information. And Astralis limited. Magisk is the only one with info lower and he doesn't have a smoke to jiggle and drop. So, he'll have to opt for the fight instead. More T utility though. And there's no real... Uh, commitment from Mouse. They can go towards that top site, and Zipex is aware of that. He's holding the slither gap to confirm main presence, and they do flood into warehouse. What a shot from Zipex. Jesus. The fact that he has three presented with rifles, and he manages to pluck one out from the crowd is phenomenal. This can fall out of Mouse Sports' hands now. It, it can't, it can't afford to. It has to be the second consecutive round. They broke Astralis after all of that hard, backbreaking labor. Five rounds Astralis have started this CT side with, but... Breaking the force, oh. and nice on the recovery. Rops was there to punish. He tried to pick up the AK, and now they have an advantage again. Dupree's Deeg, no slouch on it if he finds Rops. Oh, and he even finds Frozen. Now he hears the steps. He knows there's one towards the site, knows there's one towards main, and oh, oh Dupree's God. Deagle is unstoppable. And that's another heartbreaker handed to Mouse on a silver platter. Dupree, you beast. Finding Frozen on that heaven. Oh. If there was any question about Astralis and their individual ability, look at what they're capable of. Series. Look at what they can do. Just look at what Magus did on the CT pistol. Go back and watch Glaive, and you have your old boy Dupree on Dust too. Just oh, what a turnaround, apart. dude! I mean, Zipex taking a peek on that yard control. Whoa. That is nuts. Absolutely insane scenes here. And then they just swarm. They make sure Chris has no options. And what a round to win. It just felt like Mouse were getting back into the game. They were getting back into the groove. That's Glaive's reaction was very similar to me when I, you know, opened my my dream Christmas present. And he just, <laughs> he's just me what I he's like, that's exactly what I wanted, Dad. Thank you. I could finally play GTA. <laughs> Age 19. All right, well, it looks like Rops has gone for one of his old tricks. We've seen this one plenty of times from Ropsy Boy. The nade, the smoke, and then the play with the oh, opening yes. kill. Dupree, you were the hero. Now you're dead. You're going to have to sit back and watch as your teammates try and claw this one together. Frozen's taken space Ooh. and another scalp. Mouse spots. They didn't give up after being rocked. It actually spurred them forward. They're more aggressive. Yeah, I mean, look at the fact that they've got two low sight and the bomb still T-spawn. I mean, my God, oh. this is just going to be frags. 
Everyone's winning their independent jewels. It's Rops, though, with the double. He's got up to his usual antics around that squeaky vent. This one might hurt Astralis a little bit more before they're on the back foot, and then they pull one out of their ass, and now they've been sat back down. So, okay. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself I mean, here. Look, Let's hold up. It's a two on four. That's what I'm thinking. The bomb is still in lobby. Yeah, that's the issue. They'll go up top site. There's no one home at the moment, so that is good for mouse sports fans around the globe. <laughs> I think uh, Device and Zipex realize holding onto their rifles would be a dream. Bomb goes down and nobody's there to contest it. All right, mouse sports won't trip over their own shoelaces here. Phew. And now Astralis will just hold onto this AK and M4. I'm not sure Device even has to move. Tucked on into warehouse. Zipex now all the way back in CT spawn. Hiding behind the forklift, seeing if he can get anybody who wants to chase. But Mouse Sports, they can't risk that right now. They need to hold on to their guns. Need to start to build a bit of a bank for this comeback because it's going to be a long one. It's going to be a hard one. It's not going to be easy by any means. I'm also curious to see what Astralis do because you heard me mentioning before, well, their money, it was in the bin. It wasn't looking good. They even forced. Now they're working with a little bit more cash. Glaive with 3.3. Vegas with 2.4. But it isn't enough to warrant a buy. It is enough to warrant a force, of course. A force is just pushing your chips all into the middle of the table, buying whatever you can and giving it a crack. But again, if they go for that, it means that in future rounds, there should be, and should is the key word, be a freebie. Yeah. So they will opt in. We can see an investment, quite right. a heavy one. All right, Astralis, you really do believe in the Desert Eagles. I mean, I saw what Dupree can do with his. See if he can repeat that. Rops previously has been punishing Zipex repeatedly. I'm intrigued to see if he wants to continue to apply that pressure. Yard, however, is a focus. And don't forget, there is a save rifle on two members of Astralis. So seeing what contributions they can make is going to be a big factor. First nice. chance. Gets it. That's the aggression of Frozen completely cut down to size. And that's the bomb on Carrigan's head. He's going to want to be very cautious. Bemis has crossed over, though. So one slipping the net down towards secret. Dupree really wants lobby. I don't think that's going to be a frag. Rops has any issue finding, and there's more where that came from. Chris is holding the lobby push. This is working out wonderfully. Astralis tried to take some space, and well, Matt just hits his deagle shot and even takes an AK molly. That is an upgrade. <gasps> Device gets away with murder by C. It's open. Oh my god! He's been spotted, fragged out on the move. Carrigan's jiggle, trying to bait the shots from Magis. They know Bemis was yard. No. Caught with a nade in his hand, still gets the shot regardless, finally knocked off. Okay, Zipex. He knows Chris J was holding the lobby. Bombs on Carrigan. He hears the pins being thrown out. The bomb's been Not again, Alex. Right. Oh, it works well for the first. And now, to resolve the problem of Chris J, he hears the scope. Chris needs info. Oh, look at Zipex. This could be masterful. If he just parks himself in lobby, Chris will come searching. Chris has cleared lobby. This is actually going to work out well for the Dutchman now. A role reversal, if you will. He's got a good idea as to where he must be playing it from. Fake. Oh, he's holding it. Chris, three, two. No! <sighs> that was a half a second in it. He tried it. Pros don't fake and all that. Chris J, though, he's too wise to the tricks. And Mouse Sports, they get a crucial 11th. It came right down to the 11th hour, though. Device started that off with a bang. That's a crucial frag, as was Rops's. And then Magis just got a little hard done by. So did Device. Crazy, crazy turn of events. You can see how close that one came. Whew. A key to that round right there and why Device may have been caught off guard was because Rops was the man dealing with the lobby push. Once that frag filled the feed, they just thought that maybe a lot more had dropped down secret. That was the persistence towards lobby and info and Glaive wants to continue on that side of the map. Rops will finish him off. He's even going to grab a second. They're forcing forward. They're finding frags, but they've been mopped on up. It's just Device to find any impact and all in all, It'll be a clean one here as Mauser put 12 on the board. Scoreline now 13 to 12. Still in Astralis' favor. The guns will come out at this juncture. I, uh, I'm still not sure who's making a more convincing case. This is a great game. Yeah. Lots of individual plays. 25 for Robs, 23 for Frozen. Kagan's even got 19. 
Yeah. Not seeing any orgs out of Astralis. They haven't been leaning into that on the CT side as much as others. GG.bet favors Astralis by a large margin, but a good game. Did he get spotted? I don't think Carrigan fully committed to that, so tucked into secret early. That's a dream. And so is this positioning. Look at the crossfire they've gone for for ramp. Vice fires a shot, they swing, and then Zipex clears, cleans them up. I mean, it sounds like a theoretical ramp lockdown. Zipex tested, and Chris J hits the shot. Oh, dear. Chris gets tagged down to 2 HP. And Magis is going for the one and done. Gets the frag, and actually chooses not to drop just yet, using the vent for the tightest of lines. That's one way to claw a frag back, and if anything, it favors Astralis now, given the health of their AWPA. Well, sports working with a 2 HP Chris J, and Frozen's been found. It's not a fight Glaive needs to take. But he wants to. Oh. He's lost it. Frozen so damn sharp today. 24 frags for him. As again, Mouseport's tussle for control. It needs something big from Magus and Debris here. Those two operating with the rifle. Device is almost going to be a one and done. He's tucked in. Frozen. Is he ready for this? No, he's not. Position for Magus is now known. Still, the ramp lean. Molotov towards ladder base. That's going to give up the indication of at least where one is. Device went down early. Look at this. If they go for a ramp play, he could not be in a better spot. They don't even have a molly for his position. They have to shoot him. Okay, so Device readies himself. And Chris wins the duel. It's now we're team. talking. That's what Mouse were hoping for. And now the bomb needs to be stopped. Oh, and it Chris. can't be. Chris is having a round. Doesn't matter his HP. He just can't miss. Brought down from three to two. He's got three frags as well. Every single contribution. Chris J is right there for them. Oh, and Dupree's thinking better of this. He wanted to have a look in. He wanted to see if anybody was home, and now he's going to do very well to get away. Rops has noted his position. And now nice. Sports, what a round. Nice. Huge impact from Chris. You haven't seen anything like it. On 2 HP, he's able to find two massive impact frags towards the lower site, and this has really put Astralis in trouble now. They're in hot water. Their money situation, it's not great. Could be a bit of a disaster for them. They might even have to concede the 14th while they take a bit of a save. Bomb goes off, 13-13. Lost bonus of 2,900. It's on the cusp. Astralis will have to save. And this is the shot jumping across Device's line. Zipex unable to convert against the man who had his bloody knife out. So I didn't know how he lost all his health. Now I've seen it. Zipex, he's been having a tough game on Nuke. Carrigan's individuals, the mouse sports squad, he's even got the clacker out. It's been a few years since I've seen that one. Carrigan motivational clacker. And we're into a reservation from Astralis. They're keeping it down to 2k. Keeping the M4 on Dupree, of course, saving it in that secret position. Now then. Yeah. It's a lot of presence in Yard. Don't think the right interested. decision. <laughs> Don't think he's... Cut out for the task. God, he's really taking some liberties here as Glaive on the unarmored 5-7. Can't blame him. Oh, and Dupree puts a couple of shots. Into Glaive. Yeah, that, <laughs> that'll keep him guessing. <laughs> okay, that's a great start. BMS onto device. Secret control. It's been noted. Our sports would have to trip over their own shoelaces here. I mean, yeah. Rops just waits and gets what he wants. That's the ramp player gone. Glaive being stared at by Carrigan. Good frag from Dupree. It's insufficient, though. Glaive would need two into the back of the heads there, and he hasn't even got one. Oh, what a mess. Frozen's handled it. Magis does finish off the job, but finished off by Rops. So 27 francs for the young Estonian, and now Mouseports have the lead. It's been a while since I said that. It took them, what was that now? Four, four, five in a row? Quite the climb. Yep. And they aren't stopping. They aren't showing signs of slowing. You consider what they've had to battle through as well. All those early rounds in this half were close. Astralis were getting through by winning out clutch scenarios. And then the last time I remember Astralis really having any impact was that Dupree Deagle. At this point, they're on the back foot. Mouse Sports have been playing quite a comprehensive first half here. And it's a bit of pace behind it. Nades out towards main. Lots of pressure applied towards the top site. Yard control is on the dock for Astralis, and Glaive, he picks up one onto Carrigan, but he's gonna know what execute it is. They're putting pressure on ramp now. Yeah, Devices hit such a crucial shot by taking down one, 
prong of this ramp stack. Suddenly they're second guessing it, dumping their util, making it very clear that that's where the lion's share of the remaining mice are. Stranus, not ones to give away an advantage. And it's a huge advantage that they've managed to find here in round 28, looking to equalize. I think these three are probably the ones I want alive. Frozen and Rops, absolute monsters. Chris J with impact with the ADP. Rops gets Zipex all the way on that box. I mean, he is going oh my to. God, Good he's a monster. Grief. He is a monster. Zipex has just been outclassed by Rops this entire map. He can't catch a break. Every single angle, any single jewel, even the aggression it's being dealt with. And now they're going towards the lower site with only one man device. You were out orbed here by Chris J in the previous. You had the right position, you had the right place. You had the wrong reactions. Now you're smoked off. Stick around. He chooses to. And they make it down the ramp. 30 seconds as they start their push for the lower site. Smoke will fade. Dupree has the door and no one's visible. Does confirm as the bomb's going down. Rops is visible and oh, Dupree, that's a big find. Making it all the more difficult for Frozen now as he's been spotted, I think, just before the flash pop. Dupree can molly him. Dark's about to get very hot. Frozen's forced out. Oh. Nearly lines them up. Chris, it's not a plan for you, but you've been having such a performance. You got anything more for me? Nades. And another. He's trying to evade it. Oh, Chris J's just popping off. He needs one more and he takes it by force. Chris J will not go down, but with a whimper, Astralis are shut down by the Netherlands representative. That's crazy stuff. Can we see that again, please? Max is loading it up. Oh boy. We've got oh a timeout boy, oh courtesy boy. of Astralis. Let me see it again. Chris 1v4. This shot, this is the one that wins him the round. He's got nothing visible. A little reminiscent of his Mirage play. Holy moly, red beans and ravioli. Carrigan can't believe it. Timeout called Astralis can't either. You said Chris J rarely has a bad series as a whole. He's come back after his uh, missing performance on Dust 2. Rops truly cannot believe it. And Rops was the key to getting that round started. He took down Zipbacks, procedural clear towards heaven, and teed Chris J up for that. They said, hey, mate, you probably drew one of these. And he's found his 20th. Chris J under 20 kills now. The two youngsters, they might even close in on 30. Rops could find it. That was insane stuff. As, wow, Astralis, how do you get back into it now? You've just been blown out of the server. You're operating with very little couple of rifles, scout, and a shotgun, and maybe that's all they need. Back towards ramp. They've been having a lot of success here. Zipax hasn't been able to make it work with the rifles. He's going for a scout. He needs to hope he can contribute here because he's only found 13 kills and getting bullied. Nobody likes that. <sighs> all right. Mouse. Poised to take us to that third map. That third map will be Inferno. There's a tag. So, Rops. He's been put on notice. That smoke has left a very large gap, but at least no more information. Magus has found one. Wow. Carrigan caught. Rops tagged. It's adversity now for Mouse, and they're grouping up for, for this trophy push. Oh, okay. no. Rops has actually taken down Zipex as well. He gets Glaive low in the process. Did he even mean to kill Zipex? I don't even what know. What the hell? I think an accident. They lined up for him. And now, Mousebots have been given another gift by Robs. Oh, look at Device. Yeah. It's been cross secret. This could be nuts. Does he have it? He's in so tight. He has got a real opportunity here. A golden opportunity. And the shotgun. Oh, gets my God. Ball. A massacre onto Mouse. After the heroics of Chris, Device steps up to the play positioning. Gives him the round. And Dupree confirms it. They're taking it in turns for the hero plays here. There was no better weapon for the job. It doesn't get better than that. An AK, you probably get resprayed. They adjust in time, but that shotgun just keeps chomping. Oh my God, the bum, back and bum, forth of this bum, game. Bum, bum, bum. Oof. <sighs> okay, so Mouseports, though, Chris <laughs> J put them on map point. They'll have to play again into the round 30. It could very well be overtime. Everyone's got everything. Magus, Magus wants to give his shot. It. Yeah, he's going for the shotgun play. Where does he take it? Glaive looking to control early yard. Whoo wee Okay, folks, we go again. Device early to the secret position, this time with a better weapon for the job. We've got three in lobby from Mouse after early utility deployed outside.
And then there's a whole lot more where that came from. <sighs> All right. Glaive is a good eyeline onto Frozen there, okay. I try and nade him. Doesn't do too much at all. Defensive smoke. So he's had to drop that to just get out of dodge Apex. and pressure again. Yeah, they like his ramp. Feels vulnerable. Glaives are rotated in to provide some support, but Molotov does make it very difficult to provide any sort of support, and they've denied ramp completely. Magic's not falling into any traps. He's not going to give them that lobby aggression that they were perhaps banking on. This is incredibly tense. Every sound cue could be enough to take us into overtime or take us to a third. Here comes the push. Glaive's got one. Astralis making it awkward now, but in comes the frags. It's frozen. Beamus. Glaive takes initiative, but so does Chris J. It's a 3v2 now. Danes on the back foot. Could Mouseports take Astralis' pick against them here in regulation? It looks good. Chris J getting the bomb down. Zipex closing in from lobby. Device sweeps in. Tetris from Rops, he'll take a cursory glance. It would require a flick of the wrist from Device. Chris J posted up and gets the frag. It looking good. Mouseports taking Astralis' pick against them unless Zipex can come up clutch. Often a clutch prefix, not today. That's a full 30. Mouseports weather the storm of Astralis and we're going to three. Series keeps on.